Mario plus Rabbids just can't seem to catch a break. Its existence was leaked before the implausible crossover was revealed back in 2017, and now it's happened again with the sequel, Sparks of Hope. The game may not be able to surprise, but it sure can delight as Mario and the Rabbids take off into space to confront a new villain named Cursa. But how exactly does this galaxy-inspired sequel improve upon the original? Well, there's already several hints as to what's in store, so allow me to uncover those secrets as I take a deep dive into both the cinematic and gameplay trailers of Mario Plus Rabbids. I'll begin with the cinematic trailer as there's not really that much to glean from it in the grand scheme, but it does get to the heart of the matter with Mario looking at the displays in their new spaceship. The new sparks are combinations of Rabbids and Lumas, but it appears that Mario doesn't know how. Why else would he be looking at a breakdown of its DNA when they already know Spawny from the first game was capable of doing this? It indicates that Spawny's not involved this time, and that seems to be confirmed in the gameplay trailer as those locations are not filled with strangely combined items. They're all natural. Something else has fused Lumas and Rabbids, but what? Perhaps it's the energy anomaly that's detected and proceeds to bring out a star map. Now, it's possible that this is a look at future levels, but I doubt it. There are two of each planet type that can be seen. The blue ones with rings, the red ones, and the ones that resemble islands. Now, it's possible that they'll become more distinct when unlocked, but that seems unlikely. Still, I believe this spaceship will serve as a home base, while the map will be used to select each level, likely leading to more variety than was seen in the original game. The cutscene also lays out what the main goal is and why Cursa is their enemy. The group has come to space to hunt down the other Sparks, as they've been captured and drained of their energy by Cursa. But that doesn't seem to be all that Cursa is capable of. When they're confronted by enemies on the nearby planet, all of them have glowing red eyes, something that's also prevalent in the gameplay trailer. It's likely that every enemy has been possessed or brainwashed by Cursa. Cursa isn't the only new character though, as the trailer also introduces Rabid Rosalina, who may just rival Rabid Peach in terms of fan favorites. She may be a mood, but she does know how to stay comfy, as there's a pair of bunny slippers next to her nook. As for her book, it looks like she's at least on topic, as it does feature an easily missable UFO with rabbit ears on the cover. And to hammer in the fact that she's Rosalina's counterpart, her chair is patterned with comets and stars. The rest of the trailer features sparks and enemies, though little context is given to the former. All we see is that the red spark floats on a cloud and may be fire-based, but then there's the blue spark which features a fiery blue aura. So maybe elements don't matter with the sparks? It seems unlikely based on the clip from the end of the gameplay trailer, but I'll get to that in due time. More importantly, it looks as though each character has a spark and, as will be shown later, it appears possible to freely swap them between characters. Mario has the yellow spark next to him in the trailer, yet the red spark is always by his side in gameplay, while Rabbit Peach now has his yellow spark. Thankfully, the enemies have more variety this time around and won't always be rabbits, though naturally they still feature. The first is a bigger one that seems based on a tiger with a tail tied around its waist and a set of claws taped to its paws. I'm unsure if it stems from any specific inspiration, but it does serve as a visually distinct new heavy opponent. The next rabbit enemy is one with a skeletal mask over its face. While it's possible that this design may be based off the bone Goombas, the lack of fusing beyond the sparks leads me to wonder. Will the fusions be limited to characters, or are they simply costumes intended for effect? I can't say for sure right now, but I do really appreciate that normal Mario enemies are in there as well, with bob popping up in the cinematic trailer and Goombas appearing in the gameplay one. It's sure to help the variety as the game continues on. But speaking of the gameplay trailer, let's go ahead and move to that as it's hiding way more possibilities. From the first shot, it's apparent that locations will be much more expansive. Here, a full beach is shown complete with a nearby Greek-inspired town. There's even enemies wandering the sand. Of course, this is still very much a rabbit's world, as statues feature mermaid rabbits, there's a giant pair of sunglasses in the background, and a Poseidon rabbit is holding up a partially eaten donut sun. This isn't just some legendary figure though, as the rabbit appears later on in the trailer. While he has an impressive beard and a crab hanging out on his head, his adornments are a tad patched together and appear to be simple cardboard. Still, I wonder what role he'll play as either an ally, the boss of this world, or maybe even a side quest. 
There's still much more to see of this area though, as the town has an entire rear featuring a walkway, ladders, and a sheer drop waterfall. More curious is the giant stick and sack in the distance, along with some unknown item laying on the rocks. Another angle of this is provided later in the trailer, confirming that the sack is indeed the type typically associated with running away, and even a pair of giant swim trunks hung up to dry. The question is, who do these belong to? Is it the Poseidon Rabbit, or maybe some other kind of giant is here? Continuing on, the next thing shown is a closer look at that town, and it might even have NPCs. That rabbit in overall certainly doesn't seem like an enemy type, as it has no red eyes. More significantly though, is the quick cut to a dark and stormy night, where the nearby lighthouse seems to get possessed. That obviously makes it a prime target to visit, but I'm more curious about the sun symbol that's lit up at night, but not during the day. I would assume that it would be the opposite, as the light would banish the darkness, but perhaps it's simply something that happens at night. Despite the daytime version being shown first, it seems the night setting is what Mario and the others encounter upon arriving. The goal is to cross the beach, reach the lighthouse, and clear out the corruption, likely bringing back the sun to this world. The Poseidon Rabbit does appear during the storm, so perhaps he's a guardian of sorts? Though he does lack the red eye, so maybe he actually helps Mario with the corruption. A bigger question is if this is how every location will be with a dark corrupted version that gives way to a bright liberated state. One thing that is still the same is how Beepo leads the party forward and the others follow behind, though there is one subtle difference. They're no longer in single file, but form a triangle formation. It's a little thing, but it speaks to how much wider the locations are. The camera is also able to be shifted to a more behind the back view, giving the sense that this is a 3D adventure, rather than a series of mostly linear hallways connecting battle arenas. And that's because arenas are handled differently. No longer do they take place in the overworld, but in special arenas once enemies are touched. These arenas are certainly surreal in nature, though I wonder if they'll be randomized in some way to keep players guessing. It certainly loses the set nature of battles from the original game. That said, there's many changes to see here. Movement is no longer tile-based, and a white circle shows how far a character can run. What's unclear is if there's some kind of limit within that circle, as allowing the player to run and slide tackle enemies to their heart's content seems a bit broken. It's more likely that it takes cues from Valkyria Chronicles and a meter drains as each character moves around within that space. That white line also shows that the cover system is still intact as it curves around each possible piece. It was pretty obvious just from the design of the arenas, but it's still nice to have that extra visual conveyance on what can be done. It's unclear if there's any changes to cover otherwise, though the boost jump appears to be upgrading as Beepo flies in to help Rabbit Peach cover more ground. The bigger question is if this always happens or serves as some kind of special ability. That's likely not the case with the bob -omb toss, though we wonder if it's performed the same way as the slide tackle. It's smoothly done in the trailer, but how does the player decide where the bob -omb is thrown? And is this only possible with that enemy, or can other types be tossed too? Maybe Galoombas will be here since Goombas are too. I haven't had a chance to mention it yet, but there are more characters than those that appear in the cinematic trailer. Rabid Luigi is shown running around with Mario and Rabid Peach, just like the initial group in the first game. It's unclear if everyone will be separated again. It's possible, but maybe not for as long as there's quite the group around Rabid Mario when he appears later on as well. The only weapons we see in action are those of the initial group though. First up is Rabid Luigi, who wields a frisbee that acts as a boomerang, though it has massive reach, hitting all three enemies in that clip. Next is Rabid Peach with her multi-rocket launcher, which seems a bit overkill against a lone Goomba. And finally, there's Mario's new twin pistols in action, which allow him to shoot two different opponents at once. That does make me wonder if both can be aimed at a single target, which I assume will be the case. That's the fun of twin pistols, after all. The beach seems to be hiding a few more secrets as well. There's an explorer rabbit with a backpack so stuffed with artifacts that it can't move. It further pushes the idea of NPCs this time around, though the presence of the compass icon could mean this is more of a side quest. Is this how they be marked, or could locations on the map be marked and the compass is the marker that leads players to the destination? It really could go either way, but it does further show how the scope of Mario plus Rabbids has been increased. 
The next beach area is one that's underground as some kind of black substance has spread all over, seemingly emanating from the broken jar in the back. There's no clue to what this is, but perhaps this is located in the basement or a cave system below the lighthouse that's been so prominent. This could be the dark energy that needs to be defeated. After all, the path just in front of the group has a starry night-like pattern until they get closer, then it turns red and ominous like the enemies controlled by Cursa. Finally, there's a cave area where the entrance can be seen at the rear, confirming that this is once again at the beach. This could even be tied to the scene just before, though it's difficult to say conclusively. The sun icon in the center should be noted though as it ties into Rabid Poseidon's own sun. It's possible that once the black substance is banished, this is a new side quest to find Poseidon's real treasures. After all, he is stuck with cardboard duplicates right now. There just seems to be more to do than the main goals. Beyond the beach, there are a couple more locations and elements to note. First of all is the unsurprising return of coins, which will likely function the same as the original game, buying and upgrading guns. Next up is a snowy area where the cave openings are also shaped like rabbits. Presumably this leads to the large mansion where more enemies await, as piles of snow and icicles can be seen on the left side. More interesting is the presence of two pictures on either side of the staircase. The left features some kind of spaceship running from a brightly lit crystal container, while the right shows a ton of different road signs, including no rabbits, surrounding a penguin-like character who looks quite tired. Then there's the strange banana shape on the left. It's unclear what either of these paintings mean, but they feel like clues to the boss of this level. Perhaps the penguin in the admiral outfit? That finally brings me to the new rabid character that wields a sword. I've seen a little speculation on whether this is rabid Bowser, but the design is so different that I'm unsure. There's just no Mario character that this brings to mind, which could make it wholly original. It looks like there's some kind of showdown going on at the waterfall at the beach at first, but then the editing makes it seem as if this sword rabbit is on the hero's side. At the very least, it looks like rabid Mario is impressed as he looks on with hearts in his eyes. I would say this points to the sword rabbit being female, but I don't want to presume and declare it so. The trailer ends with the red spark being used as a super attack and summoning meteors upon enemies, showing what their use will be in battle. It makes sense and adds an element that wasn't there in the original. But before I finish this deep dive, I do want to bring attention to a theory that I've seen put forward by a few different people. The idea is that Cursa is actually Rosalina, as the overall designs and the star at the chest are similar. It's not something I considered personally, but the evidence is compelling. If this is the case, I don't think Cursa will be the final boss. It seems pretty likely that the entity that possessed Rosalina will be defeated, Rosalina will join the party, but the entity will instead find a new host in, naturally, Bowser. It's cliche, so I'm actually hoping Cursa isn't just a possessed Rosalina, but maybe the story will swerve in ways I don't expect. Really though, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hopes already appears to be expanding upon the ideas established in the original game. The levels are more wide open, the promise of NPCs and more side quests are hinted at, and the gameplay has been tweaked for new ideas for every character. It's what people usually hope for when it comes to a sequel. The original game was already a shock, especially with how good it turned out to be. I'd love to see that quality continue here. But what do you think of Sparks of Hope so far? Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this deep dive into the cinematic and gameplay trailers, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash gvgaming so we can create more videos like this in the future. Of course, we appreciate all of your support, whether it's just hitting the like button, subscribing to Good Vibes Gaming, or ringing the bell. Until next time, bye.